If we were sitting together right now, just you and me, this is exactly what I tell you. Most people have no idea that they're being exposed to things that can mess with their hormones, their energy, and even their fertility. And it's not the scary stuff from factories, landfills, or toxic waste dumps. It's the shampoo in your shower, or the gentle baby wipes in your diaper bag, or even the candle you're lighting to relax. We shouldn't have to constantly be in defense mode because of toxins in our everyday products. One of my clients, Sumaya, was struggling with severe asthma and eczema and knew she needed to make changes, but had no idea where to start. So I suggested we remove fragrances from her routines and her reaction was, wait, how did I not know this? You see, the part that gets me is that most of these exposures are invisible and we're told they're perfectly safe. But I've read the studies, I've worked in the system, and I know how easy it is to miss things that actually matter. So no, you don't have to panic and you don't have to become a full-time researcher. That's what I'm here for. I've spent the last 23 plus years of my life studying the effects of toxic chemicals and I'm going to walk you through the exact changes I made and the ones I recommend to people that I care about the most so you can stay safe from toxins without losing your mind. Full transparency, even as a toxicologist, I was unknowingly bringing toxins into my own home for a long time. I thought I was doing all the right things by buying bottled water because I didn't trust tap water or lighting a fancy coconut wax candle and using name brand detergent that promised to be gentle and safe. But the deeper I looked, the more I tested, read and researched, the more I realized I was still being exposed. In fact, some of the very products that I trusted the most were the biggest culprits. There wasn't one single dramatic moment that changed everything. It was more like a slow unraveling, kind of like what happens when you start to ask questions about things that you used to accept as normal. Early in my career, I worked in the flavor and fragrance industry. So that meant I dealt with chemicals daily, which were used to make products taste better. They were widely used, industry approved and considered safe. Technically, they were generally recognized as safe or grass by the FDA. And for a long time, I did not question any of it. But over time, especially after going through fertility challenges, I started looking at it all through a different lens. I started asking, what does approved actually mean? Were these chemicals truly tested for long-term safety in real people in real life situations over long periods of time? Because a lot of people eat flavored foods for decades. And what I found shocked me. It stopped me in my tracks. Many flavor chemicals were grandfathered in and no testing was required because they had been used for a number of years before the regulations were established. Other things that shocked me were when I found out that many plastics labeled as BPA free are made with BPS or BPF, which are cousins of BPA that can disrupt hormones in pretty much the same way. And in some of the studies are even worse than BPA. Scented candles, the kind that I was burning to unwind and release, you know, a scent into my home, were actually releasing formaldehyde, benzene, and other toxic volatile organic compounds into the air I breathe. And bottled water that I was drinking every day. I mean, I was buying those huge plastic jugs of water from the grocery store. Now looking back, I remember the water tasting like plastic, so it's no surprise that research later on showed that many brands contain microplastics, sometimes in the hundreds and thousands per liter of water, and often carrying endocrine disrupting chemicals and heavy metals along with them. I was stunned because if me, someone with a PhD in toxicology had missed this, how is anyone else supposed to know? But instead of crashing out, I chose to take responsibility and make this simple not just for me, but for other families too. This is what I wish someone had told me earlier. You don't need to overhaul everything. You just need to get started. And once I knew better, the question became, where do I even start? And so what I've learned both personally and professionally is that these areas, these three areas make the biggest difference, the fastest in terms of our toxic load. First is water. Filter it like your life depends on it, because honestly, it kind of does. Water touches pretty much everything, right? We drink with it, cook with it, even bathe and shower with it. And come to find out, now we need to like ask what's actually in it. Tap water across the US has been found to contain PFAS, AKA forever chemicals, pharmaceutical residues, chlorine byproducts, and even perchlorate, a chemical that's found in rocket fuel. But what about bottled water? It's often just filtered tap water with the added bonus of microplastics and endocrine disruptors that are leaching from the bottles. So instead of drinking bottled water, I would invest in a high quality water filter. I'm personally using a reverse osmosis countertop unit that filters into a glass carafe 
and then I add mineral drops to remineralize the water. But if that's not in your budget, try a charcoal block filter that removes PFAS, microplastics, and heavy metals at the very least. Now I need to be honest really quick because I see a lot of influencers calling Brita trash without even researching it. I looked into it and Brita actually makes an elite filter version that does remove PFAS, microplastics, and heavy metals. Like I said, that's the bare minimum, but at least we know there are options in stores that you can find. So it just goes to show, don't believe every influencer out there you see, especially people who are calling products trash without giving you an explanation of why that product is inferior or what the problems are and educating you on what better options there are and why. If they can't explain why, they don't know what they're talking about. I highly recommend asking companies for their water filter test reports because it's really the only way to know if the filter is actually removing what they claim. If you're unable to invest anything, an interesting study found that boiling water actually reduces microplastics because they get precipitated in the calcium that is encrusted in the bottom of the pot. Another study showed that adding a squeeze of lemon before boiling the water can neutralize disinfection byproducts to a certain degree, but it's not clear whether or not adding lemon juice to your water before you're boiling can impact how efficiently microplastics are removed. But nonetheless, it's Amazing to know there's actually research showing that something as simple as just boiling your water can actually remove something really toxic and highly concerning as microplastics. Remember to just start where you are. Don't ignore your water because there isn't much we can do to avoid contaminated water besides filtering it. The second thing I would change is our air quality. So basically stop polluting your indoor air. This isn't something we think about because normally we think that outdoor air is more polluted because of gasoline from cars and industrial waste. But the EPA actually says that indoor air can be three to five times more polluted than outdoor air. And you'd be shocked by how many of my friends and family still burn scented candles, use scented plugins, even around pets, babies, their kids and even themselves. They might seem like innocent little indulgences, but they're releasing formaldehyde, benzene, and phthalates into the air and you wouldn't know it. And some of them unfortunately keep off gassing even if they're not lit, as in the case of candles. And studies show that scented candles emit VOCs, like I said, including formaldehyde and benzene when you light them. These are known human carcinogens. Air fresheners ironically are actually making your air more dirty and polluted. One study found that they contain Liliao, which is an endocrine disruptor that's banned in the EU, galaxolide, musk ketone, and butylated hydroxytoluene, which are suspected carcinogens. What's crazy is that household dust actually acts like a sponge for toxins, including phthalates, and they can release them back into the air anytime you step on your carpet, you're walking around, those things get recirculated. And unfortunately, I found this out firsthand even before reading the studies that fragrance chemicals bind to house dust. So a quick story, one time we replaced a ceiling fan that had a thick layer of dust from the previous owner still on it. The dust got kicked up when we removed the fan and it smelled like a thousand, I swear, a thousand scented plugins hitting me in the face. It was absolutely disgusting. So what I would tell you is to swap candles for beeswax or coconut wax candles with essential oils if you must have a scent. But absolutely, first and foremost, open your windows daily, even if it's just for 10 minutes. Any amount helps. And vacuum, dust, mop, and sweep regularly to collect that dust to keep it from recirculating. And optimally, a HEPA filter vacuum is the best bet. Clean air isn't just about what you remove, it's actually about what you invite in, right? Freshness, calm, and of course, peace of mind. So the number three thing that I would swap is the food, right? Let's think of food as eating for detox, right? Food is one of the most powerful levers that we have, but it's also one of the most overlooked sources of toxins because there can be pesticide residues, artificial dyes, chemicals leaching from packaging, and these exposures can add up over time. And they don't just affect our digestion. They've actually been linked to changes in our mood, fertility, and even neurodevelopmental challenges in kids, as in the case of artificial food dyes. But this does not have to be overwhelming. It just takes a few smart, intentional, well-informed shifts. Here are a few simple guidelines that I follow and would like to share with you in case you wanna do the same. I try to buy as many organic foods as possible 
but if that's not within budget, try looking for the EWG Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 list, which can help to guide your decision making when it comes to which fruits and vegetables ideally should be consumed organic. I personally look for organic fruits and vegetables that I'm not removing the skin from. For example, apples, you can remove the skin, although some pesticides can actually penetrate through the skin. So if you can get organic apples, that would be ideal. Berries are things that you can't necessarily peel either. So eating organic berries is also ideal. However, with that said, there are certain types of fruits and vegetables that have a thicker skin where pesticides cannot necessarily penetrate through them. For example, avocados, you can also get conventionally bananas. However, personally for me, I prefer to buy organic fruits and vegetables simply for the sake of not exposing agricultural workers and the soil to unnecessary pesticides if we can avoid it. But again, that's just a personal choice. Avoid canned foods if you can, even if they are labeled as BPA free, because BPA can be substituted for other endocrine disruptors like BPF and BPS. The can linings leach BPA and other analogs into the food we eat and studies have shown that you can actually detect an increase in these chemicals in the blood after consuming canned foods. I like to eat beans and I try to soak and cook them myself from dried to avoid the bisphenols and cans, but it's time consuming. And I just wanted to share that I was really happy to see that Sprouts and other health food stores are carrying beans in glass jars so you can avoid the BPA altogether. Never microwave in plastic. Heat accelerates chemical leaching, even from so-called microwave safe containers, which by the way, I don't believe exist at all. In fact, one study showed that 4.2 million microplastics and 2.1 billion microplastics leached from a single square centimeter of a plastic container when microwaved for just three minutes. And I know some people who microwave their food for four, five, six minutes. So I would definitely, definitely urge that you switch to glass containers, especially if you're microwaving. This also goes along with the idea of storing your leftovers in glass as well, because plastics degrade over time. And of course, these exposures and leaching of microplastics, these can accumulate in your body and they have been detected in pretty much every human tissue at this point, and even in newborn babies meconium, which is their first bowel movement, there are microplastics in there, which means that babies are being exposed to microplastics in the womb. So highly recommend switching to glass and stainless steel as much as possible. Every choice you make is either helping or hurting your ability to detox. And every smart swap or low tox swap is a step toward a cleaner, more vibrant you. So here's the part that I think more people need to hear. You don't have to change everything overnight. I can't say this enough times because you really don't. I didn't wake up one day and throw every product out in my house because that's not realistic and it's an all or nothing kind of mindset which can keep you paralyzed and crippled with fear. Not to mention the cost would be insane. What I did instead was simple. I picked one category at a time, food first, water, and then air. And then anytime I ran out of something, I replaced it with a better option. Super simple no overwhelm, no guilt, just one intentional step at a time and focusing on just getting 1% better. You don't have to be perfect. Whenever I eat or drink something, I try to choose the least concerning option as much as possible because it is not about being perfect. You can't even be perfect if you tried and you would drive yourself crazy. That's the mindset that kept me sane throughout this entire process. It's not about doing everything. It's about doing something consistently. Yes, toxins are everywhere, we can't control them all, but we can control the things in our homes, the things that we eat and drink and breathe every day. So if you're wondering where to start, here is my advice. Don't wait for the perfect product or the perfect moment. Just start with what is right in front of you. For example, the bottle of water on your desk or the candle on your shelf or the plastic container from your meal preps. Just pick one thing at a time and swap it out for a cleaner option and slowly build up over time from there. Again, you don't have to do it all at once. You just have to start. And this is the same things that I tell my closest friends. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to be stressed out. You just need to be aware and move with intention because every smart swap you make is one less burden on your body, one more way you're showing up for your future self and for your family. If you found value, hit the like and subscribe and check out these videos on how to detox using evidence-based lifestyle interventions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.